from illegal operations by the RCMP, from pasta games, from even the mafia building the roads. This is the dark history of Montreal. Pasta Gate. Now, <laughs> pasta isn't really controversial, but the French language police will make it very controversial. <laughs> Imagine you open a small Italian restaurant in Montreal, and one day the Oculef, the French language police, knock at your door. And they tell you that they have something to tell you, that you have violated the law. In fact, your menu has words that were not in French had words like pasta, calamari, antipasto. These words were not French, and you had to change them for your menu. And honestly, I don't even know what is pasta in French, and French is my first language. So <laughs> Anyhow, uh, well, this led to a huge wave of controversy with many other restaurants sharing similar stories. Uh, one restaurant called Brit's Chips shared that they had to change the word fish and chips because it was an exotic name and from the English language and had to be changed in French into poisson frit et frites, which means fish and chips in French. And even worse, grocery stores had to remove the word steak because that was also an exotic name from the English devilish language and had to be changed for beefsteak in French. Now another event was where there was a sticker. It says on and off. This could not be admitted by the OKLF. They had to remove it and hide this crooked English language. Now, the Quebec government has said that this is they were a little bit over excessive, a little bit over excessive in how the OQLF was a little bit over excessive in how they proceeded um, with, their, with their methods. Operation Vampire. Now, this is a little bit interesting because we learn about this in school, but it's like the story that we don't tell about what happened. So, in 1970, it was a terrorist attack in Quebec and in Montreal. It was called the October Crisis, where the FLQ bombed mailboxes and they kidnapped people, and all of this was for the separation of Quebec from uh, Canada. After the October Crisis, where uh, most of the perpetrators were arrested, um, well, what happened was that Canada wanted to stop the arrival of Quebec separatists at all costs. And the all costs meant that the RCMP had to carry out illegal and clandestine operations in Montreal. So Operation Vampire was part of many operations called Operation Bricol, which is the bigger operation. And specifically Operation Vampire was to about putting these hidden microphones in Montreal and listening to conversation. The goal was to maybe find people who were for the separation of Quebec and maybe stop more uh, extremists arriving, but it is also a huge breach of the liberty of speech uh, and also a huge breach in the trust of the Montrealers. The Montreal Experiments. I know I talked about it a lot, a lot and a lot, a lot, but you know, this is a Montreal video, so I gotta talk about it at least once. Uh, if you don't, if you already know about it, you know, you can skip it. But if you don't, well, it all happens at McGill University. Maybe one of the most renowned universities, and maybe one of you guys are actually in McGill University. And there was a, an area at McGill University called the McAllen Institute. And this was a site where the CIA hired people to torture students. The goal, of course, wasn't to torture students, was to find a way of mind control. But the result was that many students were tortured. It was carried out by someone called Dr. Donald Erwin Cameron. And he was hired by the CIA and paid by the CIA to carry out experiments on depressive and schizophrenic patients. And the students were tied up, they were giving um, medication that would keep them awake, but they couldn't move. And all sorts of torture like electroshock therapy were performed on them. And uh, they would listen to tapes telling them that their mother hates them. And the result is that many of the people who gone through this experiment uh, were in a vegetative state afterwards. Expo 67 bombings. So if you ever visited the old port of Montreal, you're gonna see a building. Uh, and this building, this weird building, is called Expo 67. 
Expo Sunset was also an exposition of things that happened of all across the world. And there were many, many political things happening at Expo Sunset as well. Uh, notably, there were many protests against the Vietnam War. Uh, there were protests against racial discrimination in the US as well as uh, people who wanted to cancel the Expo Sunset because of the Six Day War. And the, the expo had many expositions of different countries and could visit uh, the exposition of the different countries. You could visit, you know, Canada, you could visit all kinds of different countries. And one of the most popular countries in Expo Sunset was actually Cuba. And Cuba was also a very strange place to visit in Expo Sunset because it was also protected by secret services. In fact, in March 1967, a bomb was targeting the Cuba exposition, but nothing really happened of it but, it, but it led to special forces protecting that site. And a few weeks before the Cuba exposition, well, some people also wanted to bomb it again, but they weren't able to access the Cuba pavilion, so they left a bomb at the exit of the Jacques Cartier Bridge. And finally would be the bombing on May 14, and it exploded, but didn't have any victims, and it wasn't also in the pavilion, it was close to it. The Mafia built the roads. In 2011, there was a commission called La Commission Charbonneau, and was a report on where the money goes when we hire for public work. Public work includes things like building the roads. And if you've ever been in Montreal, well, you know that the roads aren't exactly the best. And the reports of La Commission Charbonneau were quite shocking. One of the things that we learned is that when the city hired contractors, well, some of these contractors didn't have money and needed money. And where do you get the money? Well, they would go to these illegal organizations like the Hells Angels or the Mafia, and they would gather their fundings that way, which probably isn't the best way. <laughs> Another thing we learned is that the Mafia controlled the syndicates for the public works. For example, the Mafia and the Hells Angels were very close to the director of the FTQ construction group that builds the roads and many other public works and they, because they had this privileged position with the director, well, they managed to hold very privileged position within the syndicate and were kind of able to control from the back end uh, the situations happening with construction. As well, many of the construction uh, that was given was given to contractors, but a lot of time it was also given to the mafia. And these contractors will, will give these le legal con connections with the mafia and give them parts of the work uh, and they would have, you know, municipal, provincial, and federal paving contracts. So, in a simple term, the Mafia built the roads. Thank you so much for watching the dark history of Montreal, and I'll see you guys next week for the dark history of World War II, and stay tuned and press the notification button to get notification <laughs> for next week.